Hey guys, Buffing Game back today for you another video for our weapon conversion series, and today we're going to be covering the Rytec AMR and turning it into the Barrett XM109 AMPR, the Anti-Material Payload Rifle. So this is a prototype variant that was developed by Ronnie Barrett in the mid to late 90s in accordance with a specification put out by the United States military. This only was in the prototype version. It was never formally or officially adopted by the United States military, but we'll go into more detail on that. I'll show you how to build this. We'll go in game, check out the recoil and see how it handles in game against bots. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So we back out. Here's the final design we're going to use for the Barrett XM 109. So you can see here, we'll go ahead and back out now. Now, if you don't have the Rytec AMR unlocked yet, what you can do is check out yesterday's M82 video where I go over the 50 cal variant of this weapon and I'll explain how to do it there. What you need is three headshots, or excuse me, three quick scopes in 15 games. So it's very easy to do. All you gotta do is equip the best way to do it. I'll go over it in that video for more detail. But a quick CAR 98 loadout I'll cover there for you and show you how to do that quick and easy. You can get your three quick scopes, leave the game and get the credit and you get this weapon unlocked in under an hour. So go ahead and check out that video. I'll link that down below in the description. But today we're covering the we're turning the Rytec AMR into the Barrett XM109. So you can see here with the description of this weapon, the Rytec AMR, it says this semi-automatic anti-material rifle, which the Barrett M82 or the M107 in real life is not an anti-personnel rifle, it's an anti-material rifle, uh, chambered in 50 caliber or 50 BMG for dominant long range assaults. Also, here's the key part here, a 25 millimeter, <laughs> so 25 by 59, very large round, High explosive payload variant is officially listed as experimental. So this is based on a real variation of this weapon developed by Ronnie Barrett. Um, let's go ahead and select this weapon. What I'll do is strip this down to, to base here. We go in and we'll build this thing from scratch. So first off, the muzzle brake here, the base muzzle brake is uh, the same one you'll see on the current versions of the XM107s. So that's again the 50 caliber version. So this is a brand new muzzle brake versus the old spade tank style brake that we have available as an attachment here as well. But what we're going to do for the muzzle is we're going to actually convert that. You could go with the base muzzle if you wanted. You could also go with the tank brake to give it that big fat muzzle brake there. But the, and I'll tell you why later on, but we're going to go with the Rytec AMR suppressor. So this is going to assist with the sound suppression as well as the damage at range. The cons here being the ADS speed and the aim walking steadiness. So as it says here in the description, multi-caliber suppressor greatly reduces sound signature and increased muzzle velocity. Moderate weight increase affects agility. So uh, this is actually the exact same type of suppressor that was used on the prototype version. It's all, it's called a QDL suppressor. You'll see it on the XM107s and the Barrett M82s as well. We'll go ahead and select that. Now for the barrel, the key attachment here, I'm not quite sure what the base barrel is. I believe it's just about a 20 inch barrel. We're going to want the FTAC 448 millimeter dictator barrel. So this is going to be the 448 millimeter. We're going to put it right in line with the real life barrel size of the XM 109, which is the 17.6 inch barrel length. So this is exactly that with the 448 millimeter. This is going to assist with the ADS speed since we have a shorter barrel, the movement speed, the cons here being bullet velocity and recoil control. So we'll go ahead and select that. Skip out on the laser, and for the optic, again, just for personal preference for this particular build, we're going to go with the zoom optic. This is just going to be the variable zoom, so you're going to be able to toggle from the 5.5 to the 12.6 with this. Cons, ADS speed, but you're going to get that again with any extra weight on the weapon for an optic attachment. So we'll go ahead and select that. We're going to actually keep the base stock on this. We're going to skip out on the perk as well as the rear grip. Now, the key attachment here is the ammunition. We're going to want that. 25 millimeter or the 25 by 59 millimeter explosive five round magazine. So again, these are shaped 25 millimeter explosive rounds that this weapon takes. So we'll go ahead and select this. What this is going to do is give us the explosive impact and the damage is going to be increased as well. The cons being bullet velocity, ammo reserve. So you're going to start out with less ammo with this, the recoil control, as well as the fire rate. And one one big plus for this is the low yield payload is capable of dismemberment. So you're going to basically be blowing people up, which you'll see in this gameplay footage. We also have the thermite rounds, which are available as well, but we're not going to be using those today. Uh, the explosive rounds, very similar to what the Barra M82 or the 107 fires in real life, similar to the Rafis rounds. But again, this is a 25 millimeter shaped charge. So that's the big difference here. So we'll go ahead and select that. You can see that on the weapon there on the magazine, 25 by 59 millimeter high explosive. So we'll go ahead and select that. And then for the under barrel, we're just going to want that bipod. It's going to assist us with the crouch and recoil, or excuse me, the crouch and prone recoil control, which we're definitely going to want to take advantage of with this weapon since 
we're putting all attachments on here to basically increase the recoil. So we're gonna to wanna to mitigate that somewhere. So we'll go ahead and select the bipod. And there is our final design for the Barrett prototype variant of the XM109. Again, this was never officially adopted. So again, you can see it lacks the uh, recoil springs on the handguard, which we covered yesterday. You have the full length uh, rail system there on the top. And then the major key here is we have the new magazine with the 25 millimeter HE explosives. And then we have this QDL suppressor on here, this big fat suppressor with that big muzzle brake on the end. Again, this isn't really designed on these weapons to suppress it. The Bear 50 Cal has always had issues with suppressors. Uh, when this was first prototyped and in development there and being played with, it was it did have a suppressor equipped on it just like this because that was around the time that uh, Ronnie Barrett and that company was playing around trying to get suppressors to work on this. And again, you can see that's similar to exactly what you see today with those QDL suppressors. So this is the final design for the XM109. Let's go ahead now and jump into the gameplay for this video. So first off, let's check out the recoil control on this weapon. You'll notice that since we have the 25 millimeter rounds on here, as well as some of the shorter barrel that we're going to bring in line with the real life uh, barrel length of 17.6 millimeters, the recoil is going to be worse. So you're going to really not be able to fire this uh, repeatedly or in a fast rate of fire unless you're in the prone position. Even if you are holding your breath, you, it's really, you're really going to have to pull down and get yourself back on target. So first you'll see if I'm just firing and not even trying to correct or adjust for the recoil, it's going to go way, way, way up. But Later on here, as I'm firing it, you can see once I start controlling it, you're able to actually pull it down pretty easily and get shots on target as well. But again, this specific weapon is not an anti-personnel. It's an anti-material payload. So what you're doing here is the 25 millimeters is designed to take out essentially uh, light infantry fighting vehicles. Like BPM 3s is specifically what it's designed for to go through armor and vehicles, which is what this is designed for. So as we jump into the gameplay, uh, you'll be able to see me use this. Obviously, we're using it against people here since we're just in a regular multiplayer bot game. But I will be running this in Warzone. I'll be doing future videos on that as well. Just a side note, you'll see me running a new M4 build here that I was playing around with. I'm definitely going to start running this online a little bit in multiplayer as well as uh, Warzone. So I'll have a future video on that. I really like the aesthetics of that weapon and how it handles. So I'm going to play around with that in Warzone as well. And I'll also be playing around with this XM109 build here. And I'll be bringing you a future Warzone video on that. But you can see how this thing just, once it hits you, it's going to just send you flying. And you do have the dismemberment feature on this if you hit people right. The one thing with this weapon, with the Ritek AMR in general, even with the base 50 caliber BMG rounds on here, but especially with the 25mm, we're taking the decrease to the bullet velocity. So the rounds are going to travel slower. So you really need to utilize... Uh, the mill markers on your optic here and lead your target a little bit. You'll see here me lead a lot of shots. Um, this is actually good. This is how I'm used to sniping. I'm used to stuff like this for like Battlefield, having to lead my targets way far out like that. Um, so versus the HDR and the AX50, you typically don't need to lead that much, especially at long, long ranges. You really barely need to lead targets. But here you'll see we're at pretty, I would say, medium ranges for a lot of the engagements with this xm 109 and i'm i'm leading probably about three to four mil markers ahead to compensate for the low bullet velocity so just keep that in mind when you use this in multiplayer it will take a little bit to get used to uh but once you're used to it it's a lot of fun i've used it in multiplayer quite a bit yesterday when i was unlocking this and leveling it up and it's a lot of fun to use especially in warzone it's going to be a one hit kill to the body uh no matter what using these rounds but some real life information on this weapon so again the xm 109 was a prototype anti-material payload rifle so there was a requirement put out by the united states military in 1994 they wanted something that was able to take out essentially uh light infantry fighting vehicles so i use the example of a bmp um ronnie bear or barrett firearms manufacturing designed this in accordance with that requirement that was put out and this thing's actually capable of defeating light armor like a bpm3 at two kilometers or 1.2 miles so uh, very long range and because we have the shape charge with this 25 millimeter round so think of it as how the, the way i've heard it explained is like an apache fires a 30 millimeter round right it's gonna operate very similar to that what it is uh this is a 25 millimeter so slightly smaller than the apache's 30 millimeter but it's a shape charge so what it's gonna do is if it's if you're hitting a B, bpm3 at long ranges like that over a mile out as long as you're hitting right that shape charge is gonna propel the explosive through the armor and again 
uh, defeat or disable that vehicle if you're hitting them in the right spot, which the snipers are going to be trained to do in those situations. So again, this was a uh, prototype of the XM-109. It never reached official uh, adoption by the military. This was developed in the mid to late 90s. And again, it never left the prototype phase. So place of origin is United States by Ronnie Barrett or Barrett Firearms Manufacturing. The mass of this weapon is actually going to be lighter and shorter than the 50 caliber version of the weapon. So the mass is going to be 33.2 pounds. So actually, excuse me, the 50 caliber version of the XM107s are going to be a little bit lighter. But this is going to be heavier mainly due to the rounds and the upper receiver, which I'll go into here in a minute. But the again, the mass is going to be 33.2 pounds. The length is 46 inches. And the barrel length is 17.6 inches, which is exactly what we have in game. Here, is the barrel length that we selected is going to be that exactly 17.6 inch barrel, which is really nice to see right on point with the real life barrel length of this weapon. This set is going to be that 25 millimeter, that 25 by 59 millimeter explosive cartridge. Again, this is a shaped charge. So very similar. Think of like an M203 grenade launcher, even though that has limited range. Again, that's very, it's basically a shaped charge. Same with an RPG. So it's going to do the same job being a shaped charge is designed to punch through armor, which is why it's designated as an AMPR, an anti-material payload rifle. It's delivering that 25 millimeter explosive shaped charge payload to the target. Now the action, again, same as the M82 or the M107, is going to be a semi-automatic short recoil design. The feed system is going to be a five-round detachable box magazine. So where the Barrett M82s and the M107s are able to take a five or a ten-round magazine, this one is officially designated as a five-round, but again, it takes the same magazines, I believe. So you would be able to stack a ten-round magazine for this as well. So the thing with this, since we did swap out the 25 by 59 millimeter ammo cartridge is what we selected here for the conversion kit. How this worked in real life, and this is, would be the exact same way, is what this, so the Rytec AMR at base is a 50 BMG round. So we'll call it, as we covered in the video yesterday, is a Barra M82 or an XM107 50 caliber anti-material rifle. So what you did was this is in the 90s when Ronnie Barrett and Barrett Firearms Manufacturing developed this rifle. What you did is swap out the upper receiver and it was able to take the 25 millimeter round. So again, this just took a brand new upper receiver and the box magazine was able to take those 25 millimeter rounds and the upper receiver change swap out was able to accept these 25 millimeter shaped charged high explosive rounds. So that was as simple as that. And again, the original prototype designs, uh, they had that muzzle brake that we see initially now on that XM107 designs, those newer type muzzle brakes, not those tank spade brakes. And again, this was initially, uh, they were working on, Barrett itself was working on firing these with suppressors. They were trying to get suppressors to work on the 50 cals and they tried to do it with this. So it's exactly that QDL suppressor that we see used today on this weapon is what they were using back then when they were first starting to develop this and trying to get it to, to work. So it's a big suppressor and it has a big muzzle brake on the end too to expel that gas. Mainly what it's to do is not to sound suppress the weapon, but to reduce the weapon's signature for the effect that it creates when you're firing it. Same with the 50 cal variant of the weapon. The effect that you create around you when you're firing it, for example, if you're if anyone's seen like the Hurt Lock or any of those movies, you're firing it in sand, for example, it's gonna kick up a lot of dust around you. So it's trying to reduce all of that effect that it has when you're firing the weapon. Now, as I said, this never left the prototype phase. It was never officially adopted by the United States military, although it really remains unclear what happened to this rifle. Barrett has come out with additional um, upgraded versions similar to this, which uh, they've been using and playing with in the future since this weapon. But um, this one, again, it's never officially been adopted as far as we know, but it's kind of in a gray area. No one really knows what happened to it. But officially, what we know is it never really left the prototype phase stage for this weapon now the big problem with this and the reason it wasn't officially adopted is because of the recoil the recoil was so heavy it wasn't able to bear wasn't able to get it down to the acceptable levels for the united states military to take this weapon and officially adopt it it created a lot of recoil especially compared to the 50 caliber version again this is designed to basically take out uh light armored vehicles and at the time especially then there really wasn't a need for it you could use the m107 of the Barrett m82 with rafis rounds and it would essentially do the same thing um, just at shorter ranges. This thing could take out those the same exact targets as the M82 or the M107 with those Roberts rounds, but again, at much greater distances because you had a larger high explosive shape charge 
round which is being fired at that armor so that's the main difference again it's really neat that they were able to include this attachment for this weapon again in real life you just swap out the upper receiver of an m82 or an m107 and you have yourself an xm109 so that's this weapon let me know what you guys think of this weapon down below have you unlocked this yet have you played around with the 25 millimeter rounds in game yet let me know what you guys think of this if you use it in warzone i've played around with it a little bit in warzone and it is a lot of fun to use you can take out vehicles and i believe it also in the description of the 25 millimeter rounds says uh it kind of seems to indicate that trophy systems will not stop this round so i'm gonna have to actually test that out but that's what it seems to be telling us in the description of the 25 millimeter high explosive and the thermite rounds or at least the high explosive not the thermite but the high explosive rounds seem to indicate that a trophy system will not stop this so if you're trying to get around that vehicle meta in solos or any other game mode there this is going to be your go-to weapon again this is really not designed for personnel but vehicles but you can definitely one shot people with this uh even to the, to the chest it's going to be a one shot kill or at least down them if they have self revive or you're in squads but let me know down below what you guys think twitter and instagram are the best place to get a hold of me links for that are down below in the description as well as we have the discord server down there so we check out the link for that and join up join with the community there let me know what you guys think if you're not subscribed to the channel yet and you're liking the content go ahead and subscribe down below it really helps out smaller channels like me and again we've come quite a long way uh with call of duty modern warfare here uh going from about 100 something right before launch up to over 21,000 right now so big thanks to all you i just did a giveaway for the 20,000 subscriber giveaway as well as season four probably be doing one here as soon as we hit the season five or we exceed uh 25,000 subscribers i think is right now the goal we'll definitely be doing one season five um but if we can hit 25 subs i'll probably do an additional giveaway as well but let me know down below what you guys think of this weapon what's your favorite part about season four so far and i'll leave you guys with this weapon the xm 109 prototype variant till next time buffner gaming out <laughs>